check this out. Got a 2007 Chevy Avalanche. That's what it does. Won't start, won't crank. Windows don't work. A lot of systems inoperative. So I went ahead and checked codes. Body control module is the power mode master on this vehicle. Uh, body control module circuits all look good. The body module sees the key. It sees that I'm turning it on and attempting to crank. Uh, so I went ahead and checked codes. It looks like I got several modules not communicating and they're all on the GM low speed land circuit. So the plan here is to take this splice pack out and I'm gonna test each individual one because here's what I found. So I tapped into DLC terminal number one, that's for the GM low speed circuit and here's the pattern that I'm getting. This is supposed to be a zero to seven volt square wave. So what it looks like is we've got a short to ground, most likely a faulty module pulling it to ground. Uh, I'm gonna remove that splice pack and test each individual leg one by one, see what I find. Take a look down here under the dash. Let's see if I can position this light. Nope, gonna lose this battle. That's the splice pack I need to get to right now. All the wires are dark green, so I'm gonna have to go off of the terminal identification to figure out which module it goes to. Let me get this out here. Splice comb does nothing but connects all of these terminals together. Got this custom made tool so that I can connect individual circuits in and out for testing. So terminal D goes to the data link connector. There's letters on the side of the connector body there for reference. Just need to make the connection to each circuit. According to the diagram, terminal A goes to the radio, so that one I'm going to leave disconnected. Being an aftermarket radio, I'm really suspecting that that's what's going on here. Faulty radio, or maybe even miswired. So, that's everybody connected except for the radio. Let's see what our pattern looks like. Still got a problem, so got to disconnect one at a time until the problem goes away. If the problem does not go away at all, then we might have some shorted wiring. So it looks like when I remove terminal L from the splice pack, everything goes back to normal. So right now the fault is present. The class two GM low speed data circuits are shorted to ground. I've got no communication between any modules because of that short to ground. And the moment that I disconnect terminal L, it all goes away. And the moment that I disconnect terminal L, it all goes away. Light, I just disconnected that and dash lights came on. And now my windows are working. And I'll show you what the pattern looks like. That's all data being transmitted by the computer. This is what your class two 
GM low speed LAN circuits should look like. And that is with terminal L removed from that splice pack. So here's everything on the splice pack that I was just working on. That's terminal L. Right here is another splice pack containing more modules that I need to get to. So next we're gonna check that other splice pack. Our problem is somewhere right here. It's one of these modules or the wiring in between. Another thing is that there's nothing on this splice pack that should prevent the engine from starting. So I bet it'll start right up now. Yep, starts and runs. So we're narrowing down our problem closer and closer. Looks like the next splice pack's located in the B pillar. This is the A pillar. This is the B pillar. So probably behind this trim panel. So right away, I notice a problem. It's all wet, carpet's all wet. So I'm almost certain we are going to find our problem underneath this driver's seat. Airbag module is most likely soaking wet and rotten, but let's lead, let the diagnostics lead us that direction. Okay, got that panel removed. Here's that splice pack we were looking for. Just gonna have to repeat the same test procedure as the other one. So now that I know the problem is further downstream, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall this splice comb, splice pack, whatever you wanna call it. Okay, back here. Now watch what happens to our network activity when I remove this splice bag. Right now, we're shorted to ground. It's just flat line, zero volts. Okay, look at that. Came right back to life. Shorted to ground. Give the scope some time to catch up. Shorted to ground. That's normal activity there. That's what you want to see. So like I said, after I found the wet carpet, I'm really suspecting it's going to be airbag module located underneath the driver's seat on terminal D. So I'm going to go ahead and connect all the terminals except for terminal D. Let's see what happens. Everybody, except for the airbag module. Circuitry is still normal. The engine would probably start right up. The moment I plug in that airbag module underneath the seat, we've got a problem. Just plugged it in. We've just lost our data communication abilities. The computer does not know what to do with that. Let's go ahead and pause that so you can see. Zoom in. Computer can't understand what this means because it's outside of the parameters that it understands. This is zero volts. This is almost one volt. He's looking for a zero to seven volt signal. This is never gonna work. Play that. This is an abnormal circuit, and let's go ahead and remove that terminal D again. Bring it back into normal. That's normal. Pause it. Zoom in and see what normal looks like. This is a, oh, it's actually zero to five volt signal. Older class two systems are zero to seven volt, but still, this is the normal range that it's expecting to see, and it should be a nice, clean square wave. I can zoom in even further. You can see that on the edge of the screen. Good enough, I think you get it. 
Let's move on to that airbag module, which we suspected right from the moment we found that wood carpet. Okay, let's take a look. Moment of truth, the big reveal. Underneath the carpet, if I can get to it. Airbag module appears to be absolute crusty and rotten, just like we thought we were gonna find. So the question is what to do about it. Most likely that yellow connector is gonna be just as badly rotten as that. So we're gonna to have to replace the connector and the module and inspect just how far up does the up the harness does that damage go. So this is gonna be, I mean I could start even running right now with this removed, but in a professional setting. Uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to disable safety systems for the sake of getting the engine running. So I'm going to present the customer with an estimate to perform a proper repair. Well, 